history is something that we're both very moved by and intrigued by. We were shown a load of rather boring old cardboard boxes that went on forever and ever and ever. And inside them was a sort of treasure trove of pottery shards. And that was the seed, really. One of the things that's important in the show is that people get a sense of the relationship with the place. I would like people to think that they're seeing something which is beautiful, but I wouldn't like that to be the place that they stop. It's quite odd to put a bunch of mosaics and a bunch of paintings in a church and demand that they make sense to get people to believe that something significant is happening there. I would like them to be able to think about the relationship of the parts with history and of the labour. I suppose my labour is part of it, but I don't just mean my labour. I mean the labour of the people who made the ware in the first place. Our artwork is made up of a number of logical things. It's always quite rational. One thing builds on another. The one completely irrational and more or less meaningless element of the Five Sisters is the name the Five Sisters. We were really taken with the Five Sisters window. In fact, I really don't think I've ever seen anything quite as beautiful as that window. Walking up close to it, suddenly the roundels and the geometry of it spring into life. And as you get closer, you notice much more the curious different qualities of the individual panes of glass. The Five Sisters window in York Minster, as far as anyone knows, is probably a sort of language association. The Cistercian monastery has become corrupted over the years to sisters. So the windows are called the Five Sisters, but no one really knows even if that's true or why it should be. And we've taken that title and we've called our installation Five Sisters. The mosaic is organised in a series of roundels. The roundels relate to the Five Sisters window. Within each of these roundels, I hope to have created a sort of balance of a great variety of characteristics of the ware. At either end of that very long mosaic are two big paintings. And those two big paintings are made up of a number of smaller canvases. So you've got a mosaic running through the church and either end two big white paintings. Now the mosaic is partly made out of material that literally comes from history. They've been dug out of the ground and preserved in cardboard boxes. The material that we're cutting is of no archaeological value. There are many, many, many thousands of them. Some of them have been catalogued. Those we can't cut up. Some of them have not been catalogued and those we can cut up. And I think that there are lots of funny little ways in which we've been able to bring to life some of the properties of the material. Some of the roundels that have been made are made entirely of the thumbprints that are left on the ware as the handles are stuck to the body of the pot. All the pots are circular, so all the things that break have a sort of circularity inherent in the ware. There are just little combinations and collections of characteristics that the mosaic makes that I hope really does communicate something about the pots, which when they're all sort of jumbled together in a box, dirty, in an industrial estate somewhere, nobody would ever know about. Emma is holding those bits of uh, time-travelling stuff in her hand, cutting them up and remaking them into art. They always were a kind of art. They were sort of craft objects. Art decisions went into the beautiful parts. Now she's reprocessing them so that what you see is an intricate rippling pattern of the most gorgeous, delightful colour. In order to make something an appealing whole, you know, you do need to think about, about tone and colour, and those issues are, c are common both to the, to the window and to our work, I think, both the, both the mosaic and, uh, and our paintings. Me and Emma have been doing these paintings together for about uh, 10 years, I would say, and they've always taken more or less this form, which is of uh, the most banal division of a canvas that you could imagine. It couldn't be more simple. But the complexity comes in where you have to balance 
the colours and textures and tones of those shapes. I make up a series of uh, swatches of colour, I make up various colours and having made up the colours I kind of organise or decide more or less where some of the colours should be placed on the canvas and then based on local colour relationships we just sort of elaborate from that entirely random starting point. Now that means that there is constant, constant amendment because you know, very often one can put a colour down and it's entirely wrong, it doesn't work. The paintings appear very drained compared to the mosaic. Now that is because the range of colours is an earthy range of the mosaic. We wanted the paintings to be something that was much lower key, so you can see the richness of the mosaics. I would like people to feel that there's kind of balance, harmony, content, beauty, all of that, a sort of social context. And I would also, perhaps most importantly, like them to be able to see the relationship with the window. In effect, you've got a, a glinting, faceted, shimmering, earthy mosaic, and then either end, a glinted, faceting, shimmering set of white paintings that take you out into the church building. And we work as hard as we can to justify the trust of the viewer. But in the end, we don't know. We're just taking a chance.